Understanding the success within your business starts by understanding how time is managed, allocated, and utilized. Whether you're billing your clients, you're analyzing your project timelines, or assessing your team productivity, time tracking is key. And with SmartSuite, you have a unified solution to monitor, log, and report time usage. Hi there, I'm Alex Knowles from automationhelpers.com, and we help companies like yours get automated with portals, apps, and integrations. SmartSuite offers native time tracking that lets you log the time spent on various tasks and projects. It's built directly into the platform, meaning there's no need for extra apps or integrations. In this video, we're going to look at time tracking in SmartSuite. We'll first look at the supported time fields, then look at using these to build a time sheet or time tracking log. Then we'll look at using formulas and reporting tools like charts and dashboards in order to gain clear insights of how much time is spent across teams and projects. Let's not waste any time and dive straight into SmartSuite, looking at the time fields we have available. Here, we've got a basic time tracker. You can actually use this template. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video so you can get that. But we'll look at what time fields we can include. Firstly, looking at the time tracking log field. So if we just add a new field and search time, we'll notice the, the basic time field, but the ever important time tracking log. So let's add this field. And of course, as with any field, we'll be able to customize and format it. Currently, we've got a specific color. Let's go with the red. I like that. Ugh, with the green, it actually doesn't look too good. We'll select this drop down. We've just got the pill, the text. We'll go with just the text, so no highlight there. Then we'll select Add Field. Now, the way this field works is incredibly simple. Just say you're working on a task. Like here, we've got Fiasco, the 11th of the 5th, the work summary. All we would need to do would be to hit Start the Timer and automatically SmartSuite is going to record the time that I am working on my task or my project. From there, all I would need to do would be to hit stop timer. Then next time I jump in, I follow that again. This informs your team of how long it took you to actually work on that specific project or task, which is gonna be massive for when you are quoting clients in the future. Let's look at the other time fields we can include. We will come back to the time tracking log when we build out a time sheet tracker. So we're gonna add a new field. And again, we'll search for time, just pulling in that basic field, which is, again, incredibly simple. It's just a basic time field. Like you would have with a date field, we're able to allocate a specific time to a record within SmartSuite. We'll quickly move along and we'll just quickly add a date field here. Now we wanna look at specifically the date range. This allows us to select a start and end date. And from there, we're able to build out Gantt charts or timeline view charts, um, allowing us to better visualize our projects, our initiatives throughout the year and throughout each quarter, breaking that up further. So the date range, if we just select that record here, we'll notice that we've got the start time or start date and the end date. Now, if I just select today, the 15th of January and select the end date, the 17th, then hit done. We'll notice that. Let's just quickly add another view to this. And where do we have the timeline view or Gantt chart view, depending on what you would want to call it. We'll notice there that we've got that bad boy starting at the 15th and ending on the 17th. This is a great way to visualize what project you've got to ensure that you don't have any blockers or overlap work. Okay, let's jump back. And we're just going to look at adding a duration field. This is another time field supported by SmartSuite. So we'll notice here that we've got the duration and we're able to break this down further. Days, hours, minutes, seconds. Let's include days, remove minutes, and we'll just add the field here. Okay, we'll notice that we don't have anything currently written. All we need to do is add, let's say it took us five days and four hours. Now, the cool thing here is SmartSuite is able to determine what that value is from what you type. So there I did write five days, four hours, but if I was to write in the next section, 4D8H, 8H, boom, four days, eight hours. Now the duration is specifically linked to our status. If we just jump back into the modify settings, we'll notice here that the linked status field here is status. 
The great thing about the duration field is that you can link it directly to your status field so that when a status becomes active or in progress, the solution knows, hey, let's get things going. Let's start recording how long this takes, which is perfect for really understanding how long a project takes. Not just the time that each individual employee spends on tasks, but the overall. So just in case a new client comes in in the future, you can remember, hey, we did a recent project like this and it took exactly two weeks from start to finish. Okay, so we took a look at what time fields we have available, but how can we build a timesheet tracker directly within SmartSuite? Well, we could just start from our SmartSuite dashboard and add a new solution, then start with the template and search for the time tracker, then add this by selecting use template. And from there, we'd have an already pre-built system. Within it, we're able to track how long we've spent on a project, then bill our client what we are owed. But let's look at building this out from scratch. So you've duplicated the template and you will see this, but let's just quickly change these records so it's easier to understand how all this works and connects. Okay, so I went ahead and made some minor changes to the project names and the timesheets, just so it's easier to understand how this all works. So let's just also quickly change the timesheet title. This doesn't give me enough information. But to first change this, I want the client name, the project, and the date to be the title. So we'll want to create a formula field. I'll just quickly add a new field here, formula. Okay. Now we could create a simple value using one field added with another, but we want to open the advanced editor because we're going to bring in the client, which is one. We're going to bring in the project, which is another. And let's go with the, let's use the date range. And we'll add that field. Then we'll notice we've got it over here. Bloomjoy project to 3.0 January. Oh, we didn't actually include spaces in that formula. Let me just quickly change that. Sweet. Then from here, we're gonna go over and find our timesheet title, Flasco, Tony, and so on. We're going to select modify. And then from here, we're going to make it an auto-generated field. Yes, I do understand. And we're going to select that title formula. Actually, we didn't rename it. It should just be formula field. Update. And as we can see here, our timesheet title has now taken on the client, the project title, and the date range, the range of the actual project. Now we can see here that we've got the time tracking log field, which actually measures the total amount of time spent on the task. Then we've got the hourly rate, the billable hours, which is directly pulled from that time tracking log. We've got the total billed USD, and then we'll notice we've got the date or date range. Now it's all well and good to have the time tracking log on the project, but won't each of your individual team members want to be able to track the time they're spending on the task? So rather than having the time tracking log on the high level view of the project, surely they want you to know how much time they're spending on each task. Now within our time tracker log, we've got timesheets, projects, clients, and employees. We don't currently have a table for tasks. Now, while we could create sub items within our project, that means we're only able to assign to the same person or the same people that is the project manager. So I like to create a table and we'll just quickly name this bad boy task starting from scratch. I'll quickly fill in some dummy fields and then follow along. Okay, so I created a really simple task tracker. Within that, we've got our task, assignee, priority, status, due date, time tracking log, and the linked project. So let's just quickly create a task We'll just name it dummy task, assign it to myself. Let's go with an urgency in process, due date, time tracker. Now let's link a project. Let's just go with our project 1.0. And then from here, let's get that bad boy to start. In the bottom corner, we can actually open up our time tracker. And from here, we're able to see the person that is actually using it, the dates and include notes. Like for instance, my focus was on dummy task. Then whenever you're ready to stop and you've finished your work, 
There you go. But how can we link this to our actual project and our timesheet? Well, through a linked record, of course, much like how we have the linked project. Okay, let's quickly run through the process of linking records from your task tracker or project tracker directly into your timesheet tracker or as we have here, time tracker log. Now, currently as it works, if your team member is working on a project or task, for instance, let's say the Bloom Joy Project 3.0 from November 1st to 5th, once they begin work, they'll have to jump into the timesheet, actually enact the time tracker. Then they're able to jump into the table to manage their tasks or the project tasks. Anytime they wanna stop that tracker or they've stopped the work, they'll have to select it from the bottom right. Now this is already super easy, but we can make it slightly easier so that each individual employee is only seeing the work that they are contributing. So within the tasks, I've created a time tracking log. Now, currently we can see it's set to three hours and 31 minutes, but if we're in the timesheet table, we can't create a linked record that will pull in that value. And that's because it is a time tracking log field. Only number fields can be pulled in through a roll up field or relation field. So from here, we're gonna jump into tasks and we're gonna create a formula field so that we can manipulate how we actually use this data from the time tracking log field. We'll have to go into the advanced editor and I'm just gonna quickly paste it so you don't have to sit there and watch. And I'm just going to add that field now I will need to clean that up slightly more because it will come through as three hours and 0.52 and that's because we've got the 31. But then from there we would jump into our timesheets table and I've already created a linked record here. We can see it's linked to the tasks table. So then the roll up, if we modify that, we've already got it set linked to tasks. Then the roll up field, we'll notice that the formula I just created has become visible. So we'll select that leave it as sum. Of course, you'll need to have the correct task linked or tasks, and it will add up the total of those. And then from there, we can actually solely use the roll up field. Let me just scroll over to replace the billable hours. If I change that, and I'll just write hours, update field, because this is currently a number field. So someone's having to manually input this. Whereas if I changed those two, we will have an error here in the total build after, as we can see there, because we deleted the field. We now will use the hours instead of billable hours and there we go. It's all about streamlining the process and making things easier so you can really focus on what's important. Okay, so we've taken a look at creating the timesheet tracking log as well as what time fields are supported, but what about gaining insights into the things we're recording, right? Well, to do this, we can use SmartSuite's dashboard view, but first we're going to need to create a chart view. So you just create a new view, select chart. I'll leave those settings as the default and this will create a bar chart. Currently, it is using the value of the auto number, which isn't <laughs> valuable to us. So let's change that to duration hours. We'll go with hours. So if we remember, we linked and brought in the hours from our task tracker. So currently we should only have the one task. We can group by field and we'll make it the, where are we? Link to tasks or let's go with timesheet. So we'll notice we've got the Bloomjoy 3.0 and the rest of those don't currently have because we've only got the one task. Whereas if we were to change the value of hours to I think duration, hourly rate, where are we? Duration hours, we'll see that we've also got some other tasks popping up there. I really like the pie chart because it gives a great visual representation of where team is being spent, what projects are we spending the most time on, which members of our team are giving us the most time and who has free time that we can allocate to a certain project. Now that we've looked at the chart view, we wanna look at the dashboard view. So still remaining in the timesheet, I'm gonna create a new view again. And we're just gonna use that example for our dashboard to show you how you can insert it. We'll select a new dashboard view. Let's call this time reporting and we'll create the new view which will be blank to begin with. And from here, we'll need to add widgets. Widgets are like blocks or elements that we can add to a visual view. So if we select add widget, and then we can directly search for chart 
and we'll be able to pull in that chart that we just created. So we know it's within the timesheets table and it is the chart view because we didn't change that name. So then we can directly pull that in. We can change how it appears, where it's placed within our dashboard, and then we can bring in other values. So this is the really cool thing here. We can bring in our views, of course, like we just did there. We could bring in the grid view to show where our projects are currently at and whatnot. But the cool thing that I want to show is that we can actually bring in specific record details. So we'll select the record selector and we're just gonna select that first project there. We'll notice we've got the source, filter, selection drop down, the fields we want to display. So let's bring in the hours, the hourly rate, the duration, the dates, anything that's time related, time tracking log, total build. I'm sure some of these are duplicates from when we created the formula and linked it, but what the heck, let's bring it in. So I'm just gonna change how this appears. Now, the really cool thing about this view, the dashboard view that is, is that you can create individual dashboard views for each of your team members. Let me just go edit. We've got the style here. We can make it a list as we noticed there, looking really good. You can see hours, hourly rate, but it's really cool because then you can share this with your clients and they're able to understand how much time is being spent on their project, how long is remaining and so on. Now you'll want to make sure that you dive deeper into dashboards. Be sure to check out the video linked above where we take a look at how you can build beautiful and informational dashboards using SmartSuite. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description with more helpful resources from SmartSuite as well. Now, if you need help setting up your business or automating parts of it, do not hesitate to reach out to us at automationhelpers.com. Our team of experts are offering a free 30-minute consultation, so book yours today.